Hello guys, so today I want to introduce you to a cover. I decided to record this session while I'm just uh, generating uh, some random stuff with cavalry um, and I want to showcase you a couple of basic things uh, what it is how we can use it uh, um, and what basically this uh, new player means for us as uh, designers um, I would say that uh, up until now we don't have lots of connection between Figma and the cavalry for example we just can import SVG files from, from Figma and animate them uh, separately on Cavalry, pretty much the same as we do on After Effects, but the case of After Effects it's a bit more tedious process because we need to export PNGs, there is no like good After Effects uh, plugin up until now, and I think we just n need to... Uh, think that this is like this is like a one-way process not like uh, some connected uh, link between two applications that we design something on figma and animate something uh, and back and forth we can in terms of asset at least we can uh, go so cavalry is uh, I, I i support them right from the beginning i think they uh, they um uh, it's just two guys developing this software, the, the C++ knowledge, they decided to make some alternative to After Effects, uh, which we don't have up, up until now. There is no application for motion design except After Effects, with the more context to like shapes, designs, and motion of shapes and the vector graphics. So they decided to make a shift and uh, in, in, in that space and uh, designed an alternative. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it does uh, have a number one point, uh, a version number uh, 1.2, and it's packed with lots of features uh, like... Um, like uh, even rigging uh, different uh, sort of uh, um, so-called effectors or behaviors, uh, uh, duplicator, pretty much the same as a cloner on the Cinema 4D. And there are lots of, lots of, lots of uh, stuff there inside. You can check their website, which is cavalry.syngroup.co. Um, it does have a, f a free version right now, uh, right from the version 1.1. Point two, which is the most recent version. Uh, you can download it for free and just uh, get a quick look on it. It has, uh, uh, it, it's packed with the features uh, and the export up until a full HD. Everything rest goes to professional teams uh, pricing. So today we will uh, generate something like, let me now open it up. Uh, there you go. Something like that. Uh, and uh, we will make it, uh, trust me, just with the two keyframes uh, uh, for that. Uh, so, uh, but basically, let's j let let me just create a new um, scene and uh, quick walk through you through the UI so UI is pretty familiar for After Effects users so we do have layers panel we do have a timeline panel we do have like different panels for color alignment uh, pal palettes and all this stuff we have lots of windows here for example like uh, scene stats and we can drag it over here and just and just pin it somewhere here and see some statistics of what we have in, inside the scene this is like an asset browser it, 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 it does called like assets we can import here SVGs, uh, PNGs, uh, all of the image forms, all of most of the video formats we can 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 have place here. We can search, of course, and we can categorize them, tag them, and uh, so on. And the attribute editor or parameter editor, uh, like on Cinema 4D, for example, we does have like a like a um, out, outliner on Blender with lots of lots of uh, no outliner is like an uh, is like a uh, here, but here it's just um, just a parameter view. Um, yep. um <coughs> so uh so basically we have like a two palette of uh, of everything we can we, we can add here uh we can add text we can add different shapes uh, we have lots of options for grids uh, for snapping controls uh, for masking uh, clipping mask and all of that stuff uh, as you can see I, I I've added a star I can uh, put it on, right on the pixel actually because it, because it has like a very nice snapping system right now it wasn't here up until now um, and we have like a parameter interface here which which so each each object here has parameter interface like if I double click here you see it's sort of like uh, flashes for a bit on the left side and it means that you're here you can pin it and it will uh, stay at this panel all the time um, no matter what I click 
so here for star I can change its size I can change uh, different divi uh, divisions I can use like different ra inner, inner radius here and create like uh, cool looking stuff uh, um, yeah that's that's just the basic things so, uh, you, you can do pretty much the same on after effects it's like objects and parameters nothing nothing uh, serious here what actually cool here is that um, uh, you, you you can of course like animate them. You can, for example, for for the position of this guy, I can uh, click here and here, X and Y. You see X and Y got added into a timeline with the keyframes. So these keyframes recorded. If I go uh, here and I move the position, you see that right now it moves. So we have like a graph editor here. We have like uh, keyframes for start and end. We can ease them out. Uh, we can repeat them. Uh, so animation will repeat continuously no matter what timeline uh, uh, area we have. We can magically ease them. Um, so it's sort of like uh, eases a bit uh, in the beginning and is it at the start. You see, yeah, we can we can move them up to make animation quicker, uh, like so. Uh, so yeah. So if I, you see, I, I touched it and it sort of uh, moves here Hop. Uh, and uh, keyframes here. So that's pretty easy and very familiar to After Effects uh, user. I delete keyframes here. What actually cool here is that every parameter of the, and I, I'm not sure that every, but like most of the parameters of any object you have here, uh, can be driven by specific specific stuff called behaviors or effectors or modifiers, but they call it uh, behaviors for some reason. I don't know. Maybe they love behavior psychology. I don't know. And cognitive approaches. <laughs> but anyway, uh, for example, here, the position, let me remove everything else. The, we have like star here. And we have... Um, a position here which is like you can drag them here and here like on figma if you right click on the parameter you see there is a drop down menu here and we use like a, a behavior at array and math uh free free elements here and uh, for behavior we have there, we have around another drop down with the behavior list there are lots of them including like random uh, stuff modulators oscillators and noises and x and y which it means that for position we have like x and y we can uh, we can change the behavior either of x or y or both of them if we click on the on the behavior petal uh, here like here for example i pick noise noise uh, is a specific mathematical function there are lots of them they named uh, um, differently they have different formulas inside but basically this is just a uh, they try to mimic the, um, some 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 sort of um, real world representation of spreading the objects and uh, noises are very useful across a whole like 3D especially uh, area not on 2D but here we can use these noises on 2D uh, which is cool like right now you see my noise that I picked drives the position of the star shape one so if I click here you see it slightly moves here but not too much. If I go into parameter interface of the noise, I have minimum and maximum, and I can change them, like minus and plus, and, and you see it sort of starts to move. What actually cool is that we can make it loopable. It means that it starts and ends at the same place, and it's sort of like uh, seamlessly looped in between. We can decrease the frequency, and it moves seamlessly with the slightly less speed. Uh, we can change the different noise type. Uh, we can use cellular noise, which is like bricks, uh, or cubic noise, or simplex noise, or value noise. And that's it. And we can do this not only for, for position, we can do it even for uh, rotation, for example, here. If we drag, I think, uh, noise just to rotation, we see it starts to rotate. If we drag this noise to scale, it will, oh yeah, that's too much, I think. Let's just remove it. Uh, if we go to opacity and we change opacity here by noise, uh, let's make it like zero to 100. 
and you will see that it sort of like slightly moves and change the opacity and everything is driven by only single noise I disable it everything disabled and you have the most recent parameters driven by uh, noise so you see how much like capabilities they have like only the one behavior which is noise um, let's uh, remove our guy here and let's uh, add a simple shape you have like a command interface here which you can access it's like um, it's like our new interface on Figma where you can hit I think command slash right where you can can access all of the plugins uh, and all of the commands and shortcuts like easily here it's like uh, command or control dot uh, so I can type here shape and I pick a basic shape so it's, it's just a basic shape let's call it like our shape um, for our shape we have lots of options but I use just rectangle uh, let's make it 300 pixels and 50 in height so right now I want this guy to change its rotation and to look into another guy how can I do this uh, I can do this by adding a specific object empty object called null uh, I edit it here and you see there is some like cross here here I can move it I can change its look I think here like make it make it circle make it like reddish uh, I don't know yeah there you go now it's visible so I want this kind of guy uh, like have like specific vector go from here to here perpendicular it, it and, and the rotation like just like follows this if it here it goes like there uh, how can I do this so we need to drive the rotation of this rectangle by the position of this null and we can do this by adding a specific behavior called look at uh, I drag it here I remove all parameter interfaces from here I need just shape and I just need look at just call it look at there you go so right now uh, I need to drive uh, look at drive you see this dot it means the result of this behavior the result of this behavior will be I think some vector like mathematically which looks in and I connect the result of it to a rotation angle uh, of the shape right now nothing pretty much changes because look at doesn't know on what objects to look at and this is a target thing how we can we connect here uh, we just drag this dot to here simple enough it means like we connecting the control element the position of it to the target field of the look at behavior boom and right now you see there you go it follows and the rotation changes let me change the canvas size to be more smaller you see that's that's it pretty cool and it's completely and it is completely procedural so for control for example we can for position of the control we can use a noise like for the start before add behavior noise and right now if I go to noise and if I change like maybe 20 min, min, minus 520 C is just full full loop in 0.1 and you see this control moves around we don't see it but it moves trust me like like so like so just noise drives its position and our rectangle follows it up and uh, we can we are completely procedural here in terms of like we go into shape and we can change the shape we can make it like a cogwheel see it rotates we can make like a star like beginning like in the beginning and it is a star now let me on the rectangle and I remove this noise so all good right now as you remember I have like lots of them 
How can I do this? So for that, we will use a specific object called duplicator. All specific objects, they they just just put the, them here. But you can, again, you can access them here from, from the list of all commands. Uh, but let's just select the shape that we need to duplicate and hit duplicator. And we added uh, a duplicator object, which has one input shape. This is our shape, you see? To our shape, it's connected here. And we have a grid three by three in a grid, in a grid like uh, a layout, which tries to fit all of the objects into the rectangle of uh, like, like this one, you see? Actually, yeah, there are three of them, you see them? So I can step it up and you see, it's like there are lots of them here. So, but I, uh, I want to change the distribution from he here, from grid to circle. Uh, right now we have like a radius and angle, which we cover. You see, it's like 360 angle. So all circle covered with the objects. And we add more of them. Woohoo! Lots of them. <coughs> um, you see all of them looks uh, all, 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 of, all, all of the same uh, color. How can they dry the color differently? There is a procedural technique for that. Of course, we can go into shape, into fill, and change it here. You see, it changes for every single object. But uh, actually, on cavalry, everything can be driven by ev everything, <laughs> which is kind of cool. Uh, so here, we uh, will use, we will generate an, a palette from here. Oh, that's kind of cool. Uh, can I change on this specific one? I don't know. I don't know. Um, anyway, that's quite okay palette. Not very well balanced, but quite okay. So I will export it to ASE format. I think all of us know this format comes from Photoshop time. I think it's Adobe Swatch panel. Adobe Swatch is format. So we download it and we go to a library palettes and we hit on this uh, hamburger menu and we import it. And we import it from downloads. Boom. You see all of them are here. Right now I want to make uh, an array of colors based from this swatch panel. So how can, how can I do this? I create a ray from palette. And boom. You see all colors are here. As a specific value, everything just set here. We make it color. This is our array. Cool. Right now, for we need the result of this array, all like like index of this color. Just uh, drives the shape color. This value, like fill color. This is our fill color. This is our array. How can we drive? For every single copy, different color. We just simply connect a ray to this fill. There you go. All of them has uh, a has an s a color from this uh, palette we generate, and we can change. Like I don't like this color. Like make it like this, and we can pick it up. Can like this. Make it more warmer, right? There you go. This is our color. Um, so what basically goes inside, like behind the scenes, basically duplicator creates an index for every single object. And this UIN, UI, uh, uh, unique index, like just like mapped uh, to this uh, array index uh, randomly. And that's why we have like different, different colored uh, rectangles here. And we are completely procedural here. It means that right now, I can change anything here, like like make it like so, right? So right now I want uh, all of them look to our controller as much as we, as our main guy, duplicated guy, looks into this. How can I do this? It's pretty easy. We just need um, look at the result of look at to drive the duplicator cloned object rotation. You see, there is shape rotation here. If I drag it, 
all of them go got rotated every single clone uh, got rotated by the angle of like 16 or, or 15 yeah so right now I need to connect just the result of look at the shape rotation with this uh, wire boom all of them right now look see a look of them on our object there you go ah. there you go uh, the circle is a bit larger I want to make it small so you will see how this guy affecting so right now I want like infinite loop so this circle will move like so on the border of the canvas how can I do this so well um, I will try an, uh, another technique right now I'm not 100% sure I will succeed but for um, we have a specific object called background shape here so basically what it does it if you add this object it's all the time um, resized to the size of your composition composition is just your canvas size composition in terms of like after effects so you see uh, it's our background shape let's make it like some different color like this one uh, so if I change you see the canvas size background shape changes too um, and I want this guy to find the path of this uh, background shape and move from point zero all the way up to the to, uh, to the beginning how can I do this so for that I need as you might guess to drive the position of this control by the path so for that I can right click on the position and add a behavior called Pathfinder and I will drive X and Y so I click on Pathfinder here boom so Python, nope, not here. I, I added the wrong object. I need for control. There you go. Sometimes it's just misleading what you're looking at. Position and behavior, Pathfinder. There. Yeah. You see, it jumps in the center because it doesn't know on what to look at. There is for the Pathfinder. We don't have any input shape, but we can drag our background shape here. Boom. And you see, it drops in the point number zero on this background shape it means that right now for Pathfinder I can control the percentage or like a travel it, they call it travel it's a percentage of uh, shape you see it's like you see it's like a like uh, zero percent is start a hundred percent is the end which is start so I can keyframe it of course and that's cool and also what is cool we are completely procedural here like if we need this in a full HD I can do it like this and you see it, it's in the beginning uh, this is cool yeah uh, I imagine the eyes of uh, After Effects user right now they just completely <laughs> blown away because it's so tedious on After Effects like for example you need like a squared Instagram post or you need like a, a widescreen Instagram post for that um, and you can generate it easily the, the procedural techniques there everything sort of like connected not keyframed at all um, so right now I just want for Pathfinder just keyframe this guy so I hit click here I add a keyframe on the line for a travel and this is our percentage so it's zero at the beginning and 100 at the end there you go right now it ne it goes here like so there you go I add more frames uh, I restart animation make it more smoother because I have lots of uh, frames per second I remove the central shape and there you go we can change the background shape color like so or like so and we created sort of like effect like I did have in the beginning and uh, what is good we are completely procedural here we can increase the count yeah we can change our shape uh, let's do it let's make it corner radius make it like a sausages there you go you have sausages 
uh, or you want the cogwheels to be rotated. How cool is that? It's just just like couple of couple of mm, numbers, and you have like completely different effect. Or you want stars? Yeah, you need you can increase the duplicator count here like 120. So it mo it's sort of like a Taurus or Mobius uh, line, right? Um, and for shape, I can do a capsulus. You see? Uh, so, like, I generate um, effect based on basically a simple approach. Uh, everything's connected to everything. So, um, nah, that's, I think, it. Uh, yeah, and you can of course change the uh, distribution uh, pattern for a duplicator for our cloner. Uh, sorry, uh, for example, right now it's just it's just a circle, uh, but you can do like a Fibonacci. Uh, Fibonacci is like a natural organic uh, um, pattern which is widely used by our nature uh, for growing different plant structures. Or like random, like random, why not? Or like a rose. Uh, what is rose? It's just, yeah, like, like, uh, like so. And there you go. We can uh, decrease the, yeah, decrease the width of the rectangle. And you see, it's like a, I don't know what it is, but just looking cool. Um, uh, what what else can we change here? Uh, we can use um, rows. I have shown you rows. Uh, I shown you random. Show you, of course, grid. Grid can be cool. Why not? Uh, you can uh, ten by ten by fifteen by fifteen, and now you have like this. Um, Yeah, there you go. It's just it's just that simple. Um, and uh, moreover, for every single shape, we can drive opacity with the noise. Why not? Or with some stagger effect. What does it mean, stagger? Stagger is basically um, uh, a behavior which goes from one um, one number to another for you. It's just a, just like a counter. So let's do this. Uh, so we select a shape, and uh, we have for fill we have opacity. This is our alpha, you see. There you go. This is for our basic shape, our basic shape. So we will drive this with the stagger. I'm trying this for the first time. I, I don't know what the result of it, but which is this, this is cool about this uh, program that you basically just don't know uh, exact effect, but sometimes you randomly find different looking effect just by you know trying to trying different things. That's cool. And you see they got like stagger effect uh, for you and if i go for stagger see it goes from zero to five so we have like opacity from zero downside to five at the top but if we go like 100 see it goes like from zero from uh, down the bottom and to 100 at the top and we have like bezier curve here and we can change it how we how we mm, look on it we can do it like this so so it's uh so it's uh, 100 at the center and zero uh, here and here. And we can slightly change it, I think. Whoop. It's sort of like if we go and add something here. I don't know. Oop. Yeah, there you go. Make it more smoother. And here. Yeah, there you go. See, it's. I'm not, I'm, I'm not the best busier curve editor. But you see, it's like it is so easy and it's different effect. So now I applied this technique and I can go to my shape and change it. So right now I want it to be something different, uh, like polygon. Woo, uh, not bad, but I don't like it. Taurus, mm, cogwheels, uh, capsules, um, arrows. So even arrows looks cool. Like, and uh, I'm doing this only with like basic shape, but you can do it with the type too, uh, with the characters, not only with the 
with the um, rectangles uh, and uh, basic shapes you you are pretty you have like lots of freedom here actually like there like our circles right now they look completely different and looks cool like a preloader and it's looped because uh, our mm, control element here goes to the shape of the shape of our canvas size and that's it i hope you liked it and hope you get the basic understanding of it like there are lots of the stuff i did quickly and but the software is free you can download it and try it out you can do lots of cool stuff uh here with uh, just a couple of uh tweaks mm, thank you very much see ya